I read 50 machine learning papers in 50 days. Here's how I did it and what I learned in the process. Machine learning has exploded in recent years. Just look at the volume of paper submissions if you don't believe me. According to Archive, nearly 50,000 papers were submitted in 2021. That's roughly 140 new papers submitted per day. New work is coming out faster than is possible for anyone to keep track of. On top of this, finding good papers to read is also getting harder. So, how do you find good papers? And secondly, how do you read them efficiently so that you can explain the idea in your sleep? I use a four-step framework that I call the Chai Technique. I designed this approach based on a talk that Professor Andrew Ng gave at Stanford and it has saved me tons of time and effort in finding and reading the right papers. Here's how it works. Curating papers is like pouring water through a funnel. You start with a lot and distill down to the essentials. Curation happens both when you are looking for papers and while you're reading them. Let's look at these steps now. Curation begins with the question, why do you need to read papers? Is it because you like the topic? Is it because you need it for work? Or is it because you've been assigned a set of papers as homework? Once you know the answers to these questions, you can begin to look at good sources of new research. These include papers with code, connected papers, Twitter, and archive sanity. To collect papers from these sources, prioritize them by the relevance to the topic you are interested in and based on recency. You will discover older papers as references cited in newer ones. Don't overly bias your impressions based only on the author list and the organizations from where the authors come from. There are hidden gems everywhere. However, the author list and lab names gives you an idea of what kind of problems these groups are interested in solving. To summarize, match your interests to the papers that are related to it. That's part one done. Curation doesn't stop once you've found relevant papers to read. The next step is to sift out the ones that are worth reading from the ones that just need to be skimmed. For this, create a list of papers we'll call your reading list. Skip through the list and skim through the papers at random. We'll talk about how to read papers in the next step, but let's focus on curation for the moment. While you're skimming, don't worry about understanding every paper completely. This step is just to figure out which ones are worth reading. Drop papers that are duds. Be very aggressive in this step. How do you find duds? Here are four things that I look for. One, they don't make sense. Two, the results don't add up. Three, they've been written poorly. Four, they don't follow through on the initial promise they made in the abstract. In this step, I'll show you how I read a single paper and highlight the important aspects in it. Don't read the paper end to end. You'll waste a lot of time if the paper isn't good. Instead, read the paper in multiple passes. After each pass, you'll have a clear idea whether to dive deeper or shelf the paper. I use three passes in total and not all the papers make it through three passes. But the benefit of this approach is that not only do I know the details of the papers that I've just skimmed, I also can spend more time on the papers that are really worth diving deeper into. In the first pass, I read the title, abstract, introduction, conclusion sections of the paper and also look through the main figures that are there in the paper. The authors usually summarize their work in the abstract and conclusion sections and this allows me to quickly get the gist of the paper. By looking at the main figures, I get a good sense of what they are proposing to do. I use this step to discard all papers that don't meet the criteria I mentioned earlier. In the second pass, I skim through most of the paper and dive deeper into the methods and results section of the paper. During this pass, I skip over the math and focus on understanding the paper in plain English. I use a note card to note down parts that I don't understand and questions that I have based on what I've read. Additionally, I note down frequently cited papers to add to my reading list. This allows me to skip the related work section altogether. During the final pass, I revisit important sections that I've marked. I try to get answers to the questions I had in these sections and look through the math with code if available. A lot of papers these days have links to Git repositories, so this makes it easy to correlate code with math. 
If no implementation is provided, I use papers with code to find good repositories that have re-implemented the paper. At least for me, I find that intimidating equations become easy to understand when I look at how they've been implemented in code. Additionally, I re-implement about 1% of the papers I read in this stage to get a clear idea of how the method works. This cements my understanding of the paper. All that effort reading through papers is useless if you can't absorb the main ideas. Here's where efficient note taking comes in. Use a note card like this to take notes. Why? Because this forces you to only note down the really important points and avoid treating the paper like a coloring book. Many people often skip this step because they feel that highlighting the living daylights out of a paper means that they've understood it completely. You learn the most through active reading and not through passive reading. So how do you read actively? You take notes and reflect. From the note card, I identify things that aren't clear. I use blogs, textbooks or videos to help fill in the gaps in my understanding. This is worth investing in because I know that the paper I'm reading is worth my time. Once I have my doubts resolved, I reflect on the following questions. What did the authors accomplish? What are the limitations of this work? How can I use this in my own work? Answering these questions allows me to summarize the work in my own words and decide how I can act upon it. After this step, I store the annotated paper and notes in my knowledge management system. The final stage of the process is incorporating your learnings. This can take many forms like using the paper's ideas in a Kaggle contest or using it for a project at work or just sharing your understanding as a blog post or video. Not all the papers you read will need to be incorporated immediately, but you'll have them ready when you need them in a moment's notice. So, what did I learn from this exercise? First, learning compounds. The first few papers were very slow progress. It took a lot of time and effort to understand them. Over time, I built a lot of momentum and covered more papers faster. A big part of how this happened was that I was able to spot patterns and problem areas faster thanks to my growing library of processed papers. Most importantly, I learned that you don't need to read 50 papers every time you start on a new topic. Just reading 10 of the best deeply will go a long way. So how do you read papers? Are there any useful tips that you have to share? If so, drop me a note. If you liked this video and found it useful, check out this other one I've posted. Until next time, happy learning.